Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how to split a scroll. Thanks for watching. Okay everyone, here we are at the workbench. So, this here is a little snub in scroll that I'm working on. Um, but I'm not going to continue to scroll this up. This is going to be part of a fire shovel set that I am working on. And I just wanted to take and show you all a real quick thing that you can do to take and get a duplicate of the same thing you have. And it's not a whole lot of magic, but I think it's pretty exciting. Voila! You split a scroll. Cut it in two. Yep, that's right. That's simple. Anyways, enough of the joking aside. This is a real interesting way of taking and creating two elements on the end of the bar when you've just forged one. Um, this is a real nice way of doing this. When you're doing several composite pieces together, or rather you've got, you know, you want to take one of these one way or one of these the other way. There's a lot of different things you can do with this method and really increase some of the value to your ironwork. You can continue to scroll one and leave one stick out. You know, you can do you can do a couple different things, really. And uh, it can become a really nice, neat effect with just cutting it in two. So this is just kind of a way of thinking outside the box, thinking around the cart. But I'm going to show you how this looks when I take a nice pry these open. So I'm going to go over to the vise and I'm going to heat this up with a torch and I'm going to pull both of these legs open. It'll be kind of anticlimactic, but that way I can show you guys the final result and you can see what I'm talking about and it makes it a neat effect. And if you haven't noticed, I screwed up. This side's a little thicker than that side. I was freehanding it with a porta bandsaw, but the top looks right. And so whatever's excess meat's here, I'm just going to take and grind off the excess meat on the lower side and they'll and they'll look about they'll look about right. So good enough for the fire poker I'm working on anyhow. Or not fire poker, the fire shovel that I'm working on. So let's get to it. Okay everyone, here we are at the vice. So as I've said in previous videos. I'm the type of guy that likes to take the path of least resistance when it comes to doing my own iron work. And so, instead of sticking this back in the forge, I'm just going to use the torch to heat up the area that I need to move, and nothing else. I need these arms to stay straight, and I just need right where the end of the cut is to actually be spried apart or to open up. So that's the only part of this bar I'm going to heat up. I'm going to give it a little extra. This may come out as a bit of a blur on the camera here. I hope it's not. But we're trying to get this a little more heated up. Give it a little wobble. There we go. Heat on that. Wait for a second if I grab my tong. Yeah, wrong tong. Okay. So as you can see, it's starting to heat up the tank anyhow. So, you know, we're really wanting to try to get just most of our heat localized right at the base of this cut. Now, where this is handy. You type scroll, this dual scroll thing that you're doing, or splitting a scroll, is well, I just want you to think of any sort of scroll work you can think about, and then let me know if you think that if this would be handy at it. Some people might call this poor iron work, and they're probably right. But to me, it has a really nice effect. This is real handy. So say you wanted to do something where you had a tapered scroll, just like a ribbon end. 
but you wanted to have two ribbon in scrolls pretty close together. Well, that's one of those things where this right here, this information is invaluable to you. We're going to straighten these up a little bit so that they look nice. And if they're going to sit square to the pan of the shovel. There we go. I really like that. As you can see, I left a little bit of a crook in there and a little bit of an arc. I did that for a reason. I Part of the reason why is because the one that the customer bought in the picture that I sold to them, that's the way the product was done originally. But the reason why I did that originally to it is it gives it a nice transition point. It just gives it a nice transition and roll out. So I'll unclamp this from the vise and I'll let you get a look at it. So voila. Two perfectly identical scrolls for my attachment point. There you go. Sorry, speaking from the back of the camera. Hopefully the sound didn't get weird. But now you can imagine there would be a shovel body sticking out from there. And that's a really neat effect to have that. And it shows that extra level of detail in a connection joint. Versus just, you know, two flats flared out. Or trying to form these on the ends of two bits that you rolled out. They're already done for you. So the next step in this process, I will probably grind this thicker portion here down a little bit that way it matches the other side and then that'll be ready to connect but anyways that's my quick tip for today hope you guys like this video if you did give it a big thumbs up if you didn't give it a big thumbs down either way i greatly appreciate your input and uh yeah we'll catch you on the next one guys and gals god bless you all have a great day